Hello and welcome to another breakout session. Um, this one is breakout session number nine, and we're calling this diminishing returns. That's a, a negative uh, connotation in accounting, but it's going to be a positive one in guitar playing. Uh, first thing I want to do is uh, say hi to all my friends and all the members of the Guitar League around the country uh, that might be watching today and ask you again as usual. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the little bell so you'll know when we put one of these up. And if you like these things, if you hit the like button, that would be great too. So um, today I'm going to show you, uh, first of all, I, I was thinking that this was maybe more of an intermediate to advanced class. But the more I think about this, if you can play cowboy chords, if you're a beginner, this could be very good for you because you're going to learn some new chords that you should be able to play. If you can play a C or a G or a D, you can play these chords and they're going to really spice up your music. And then when you see one of these chords on some on a tab or something, you won't have a heart attack. So um, first I'm going to show you the fingering of this chord. I'm going to show you today a new chord, new fingering a new arpeggio that you could play over that chord or in lieu of that chord and then what would you do with these chords those are the three things that we're going to learn today so the first thing before we give it a name I'm going to show you the fingering of this chord okay so if you can see this we are going to take our four fingers and put them on the bottom four strings and we are going to have the index finger on the fourth string which is the E flat note we're going to have our middle finger down on the C note which is on the second string we're going to have our uh, ring finger on the A note, which is the G string, and then we're going to have our little pinky down here on the bottom string, or the high E string, which is a G flat note. Okay, so we got an E, an A, a C, and a G flat. That's the finger. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so now before we name it, I'm going to just show you. I'm going to play a. Um, I'm going to play an E flat chord. And by the way, we're only hitting the four strings where our fingers are. Okay, so this is E flat. Now I'm going to hit an A. This is A. Now I'm going to do a C. This is C. Now I'm going to do a G flat. This is G flat. Seventh. Okay, these are diminished seventh chords, and you notice I have not moved my hand. There's four chords there in the same position. Okay, now let's move that up one. Now we're going to play a. Um, we're going to play an E, a B flat, a C sharp, and a G. Diminished seventh. All four of those chords are right there. Now we're going to play a F, a B, a D, and a G sharp. All four of those chords are right there. So we just played 12 different chords on three frets. And when we get to the fourth fret, it starts over again. And they're just the same notes in different order. So the reason this works is these, these notes are all a minor third apart. And like a power chord, you know, like a C power chord, there's a root and a fifth, and it's not major or minor. It can be somewhere, either one. Well, this is the same concept down here. These are not really major or minors either. They're a minor third apart. Okay, we'll get back to that in just a minute. 
So the reason it can be four different chords is it depends on where you think the root is going to be. So if you're playing it with a root on the fourth string, then it's an E flat to your seven. If you're playing the root, you're saying the root is on the third string on the A note, then it's an A to the seventh chord. If you're saying the root is on the C note, on the second string on the C note, then it's a C to the seventh. And if you say that it's on the bottom string, the high E string on the G flat, if that's the root, you can move the root around. And like I said, when you get up, it's the same four notes in a different order. So when you go one, four, seven, ten, back to the beginning, that's all the same four chords with a different order that they're being played, different inversion. So that's interesting, but what are we going to do with that stuff? Well, we're going to learn in just a minute. Um, so these notes are, like I said, all a minor third apart. And that scale. So they're like three frets apart. Okay. There's, there's many diminished chords. There's probably five different diminished chords. But we're only, today we're only going to work on the diminished seventh chord. And we're only going to stay in this one fingering. There are other fingerings. I'll show you one other one in a minute because that's where we're going to get our arpeggio from. But we're going to stay with that fingering to make it easy. And today, well, let's just use the B string as the root note. So in other words, we're going to call that a C, a C sharp, a D, a D sharp, E, etc. Just going to use the C note as the root on this, okay? On that finger. Okay, now there's other there's other places you can play this chord, like you could play it with this configuration. It's a little more difficult and it's also movable. That would be the same as the C. Okay, but the only reason I show you this fingering is because this is where we're going to get the arpeggio from. Okay, so what do I do with this chord now that I got it? Well, there's a few things you can do with these chords or the arpeggios. If you were Willie Nelson, you might... She might go, Women all on my roots when I showed up in boots right there and ruined your black tie affair. If you were uh, George Harrison, you might use it in My Sweet Lord. place it's used in jazz all the time and you can use it in blue blues so it can be in blues those diminished seventh chords can be used to replace a, a, a dominant seven chord and the way that works is let's say you were in a G blues so you G and then you're gonna go to like a C7 or a C9 well you can play a C sharp diminished seventh and get the same thing and it spices it up quite a bit so you can replace it and what you do is you replace the chord see a c diminished seventh you go up a half a tone to a c sharp diminished seventh so a c dominant seventh to 
a C diminished seven. It's the same sounds resolving back to G. It can also be used over the fifth chord, five chord to come back to the one chord. There's a million places you can use this. So you can replace the uh, dominant seven chord. So we're saying A minor, we're going to go to E7. Aspiring songwriters uh, who are looking for all kinds of chord progressions, um, there's a way to do it. You can put a dominant, you can put a diminished seventh chord in between any two chords where there's a whole step. So what I mean by that is, let's take the key of C. Okay, in the key of C, there's a C. You go to D minor, there's a whole step in there. Then you go to E minor, there's a whole step in there. You go to F, there's a half a step. You go from F to G, there's a whole step in there. You go from G to A, there's a whole step in there. And you go from A to B, there's a whole step in there. And then B to C, there's only a half a step. So in between the chords that have whole steps, you can put a diminished seventh chord in there. And what you do is you put one that's a half a tone higher than the, than the bottom one, for instance. And we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna use, as I said, this, this shape diminished seventh, and we're gonna use the root on the B string here. Okay, so from the C, C, C sharp diminished, D minor, D sharp diminished, to E minor, F, F sharp diminished, to G, G sharp diminished, to A minor, E flat diminished, to B, to C. That's how it goes. Now you wouldn't necessarily use that. You wouldn't do that whole run, but you can put them in between as you see. So. so from C to C sharp diminished to D minor to G is a nice progression. So you can definitely do that. So when playing the blues, you can use them to replace the the major or the dominant chord, dominant seven or, or ninth chord. You can use the diminished chord. Or you can use just the arpeggio from that chord instead of the whole chord as a pass as you're passing through. in. So back to arpeggios. Real briefly, we, we talked about there were four sounds that you needed to know. Um, you know, you needed to know a major sound, a minor sound, a dominant seventh sound, and a major seventh sound. Well, now also you're going to learn, you're learning the diminished seventh sound. So you learned a lot of arpeggios last time. So now you got another one. It's another arpeggio that you could play over that chord, over a diminished chord. Um, a diminished chord is written, it's a, it's a, a root, 
and then it's a flat third, a flat fifth, and a double flat seventh, if you see it written out, which is a sixth, you know, but in writing, they not to confuse it with a sixth chord, they call it a double flat, so you double flat seventh, so you'll see that. A root, a flat fifth, uh, a, a flat third, and a double flat seventh is how you make that chord. Diminished seventh chord. Okay, now that you have this fingering down of the diminished seventh chord, if you were to move that everything up one string, here's another chord that has several names depending on how you use it. But we're going to call it the Stormy Monday chord. And we're going to talk about that probably the next time. But you can practice that chord now. This is a really cool chord, and we'll show you a lot of uses for it next time out. But anyway, back to diminished sevens. It's the same shape. We'll probably talk about the Stormy Monday chord a little bit. I want to thank you guys again for uh, watching, and if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, I sure would appreciate it if you would. And hit the little bell, and we'll let you know when we've got one coming out. And also, if you like these things, hit the like button. It'll sure help. So again, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.